Yeah. Uh, we'll stand for the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yeah. All right. Item number two on the agenda. I'd like to entertain a motion to adopt the agenda as presented. Do I have a motion? So By Ms. Lucian. Do I have a second on that motion? Second. By Dia Fusco. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approval of minutes, item number three on the agenda. I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the Special Board of Education meetings of January 12th, 2022. Uh, which was the new course offerings at Terrible High School Board of Education workshop ret retreat. Do I have that motion? So moved. By uh, Mr. Perugino, do I have a second on that motion? Second. By Cindy Florenciani. Mm -hmm. Any discussion on that motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the special board subcommittee meeting of January 12th, 2022, the budget workshop. Do I have that motion? So moved. Mr. Perugino, do I have a second on that motion? Second. By Dia Fusco. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the special meeting of the Plymouth Board of Education of January 26, 2022. Do I have that motion? So moved. By Michelle Lucian. Do I have a second on that motion? Second. By Mr. Zabushka. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Mr. Perugino, Mrs. Condry Florenciani, abstain. Yeah. Item number four on the agenda, student representatives. We have Matthew, Rebecca, Dorsey. Welcome. This is, I believe this is your first meeting. Excellent. Thank you for coming. And we have Zachary. Can you say your last name? Emke. Huh? Emke. Emke. All right. Excellent. I would have put yours back. So good. I'm glad you said it. All right. I'll turn it over to you, uh, Matthew. You want to start? So... Again, sports. So first, we'll say that the boys' basketball team are 100 feet for the first shooting, and the number one in uh, BL, and number one in class S. And, and then we'd like to recognize Dominic Dow, the Republican American Player of the Week, after scoring 51 points against Gilbert. And then the girls' basketball team gained a couple wins after a big rebuild by uh, rebuild by Jamie under classes. So if you're in sports betting, I recommend Jamie for the next few years. Well, already. All right, uh, Rebecca. <laughs> Okay, so I'm Rebecca. Uh, this is my first meeting because I was taking a college class at Tunxis, so thank you for having me. Um, I will be presenting about the senior class. Um, first of all, our prom committee has picked our casino theme this year, so that should be a fun time. Um, the PTSA is doing fundraisers to support the aftergrad, like Krabby Owls and March, the Nutmeg Spice Company, the Mother's Day Flowers, and donation letters were mailed to local businesses. Um, for the seniors, at least, I can say that midterms went well this year. Um, I think we were one of the only classes to have had them in high school, so we were a little nervous going back to them, but um, they did go well after the nerves got, we got over them. <laughs> um, also, I am the president of NHS, so I will be touching on the NHS induction. So we inducted quite a few new members. We're very proud of them all. They did great, and we're so excited to be expanding the club. Um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Zachary. Um, so as you may know, last meeting, I wasn't here because I was a contact. So to be <laughs> back. Uh, so as for January, the eighth graders travel to the high school to tour the building, get acquainted with the environment, get the feel of becoming a room. And they were here for the day, toured through the building. We had the uh, Fresh Start mentors help them out throughout the day. They stayed here, I think pretty much for most of the day. And they came in two waves. So it was January 4th and January 11th. They had the other half just because of COVID. 
the midterms at the beginning of January, as Rebecca was saying, the senior class did good. As far as uh, the student council representative said, everyone seemed to think the test was administered well, considering the COVID conditions. Everyone felt that the test was, the grades actually came out a lot better than everyone expected. Everyone came in with a lot of nerves that uh, with the COVID, no one was really going to be prepared, say, so if someone was offline or had to go on school online, not being able to take the test and not having the time to take the test. Thankfully, I don't think that really happened. So everyone was really prepared. The grades were good and everything worked out well for that. In February, as Rebecca also said, the National Honor Society had their induction ceremony. I think it was about 15 juniors were added onto the National Honor Society. Uh, and just touching on the National Honor Society, it's not only just an achievement, but it is a really strong responsibility. It's something definitely not to be taken lightly. Students were inducted and brought in based on having strong character, having strong leadership, and strong academic performance, both in and out of the school building. Finally, it was the final semester of the Terrible High School Capstone course, Project Learn. Half of the juniors have pretty much finished up all their presentations. They were presenting in front of just a couple, a handful of staff that alternated a couple of times on who was actually listening to the presentations. But they had, uh, they had a couple of kids throughout the week and they're wrapping up now with all the presentations and the second half of the juniors are going to be starting their course right at the beginning of this semester. Excellent, thank you, Zach. Thank you, everybody. <coughs> Anything for the... Uh... Student representative, any comments? Okay. Item number five on the agenda, the superintendent's update. At this time, I will turn the meeting over to Superintendent Brian Falcone. Uh, before I speak, uh, my boss to the right of me asked if everyone could take their masks off before they speak, just so the recorder could hear and, and so could the uh, microphones. Um, and I want to respect that because she kicks me if I don't say things. Um, as you might have heard on the news, the statewide mask mandate in schools could be ending on February 28th. The key word here is could. There's a lot of misinformation out there, and there's absolutely no confirmation superintendents have received on how we should be moving forward. Um, but what I can say is if this is true, it is possible that local boards of ed will be determining what happens with masks in school. Um, and from what I understand, there would be two options. Option one would be we could accept the end of the mask mandate in schools. If that's our decision, nothing further really needs to happen on our end as the board based on us following the decision of the governor. And then masks in school would be optional for, for staff and students. Our other option would be to implement our own mask mandate that would be specific to the Plymouth Public Schools. If this is the case, we would need to create a policy and it would have to be voted on by the board. But based on the information we have right now, there's no action we can take. There's nothing we can do. We have to wait for the state and the governor to make some decisions, kind of direct us of what we should or shouldn't be doing for our school district. So I wanted you to know that. I also wanted to know that um, children between the ages of 5 and 11, uh, the vaccination rate is 17.4%. Uh, students between the ages of 12 and 17, it's 49.83%. And as of February 7th, the positivity rate in Plymouth was 17%. So that's some information for you to know as well. And that's in the district? That is in the town of Plymouth. Oh. Uh, and that's what we received. We received that from the state. So, so that's what was reported to them. Um, as um, at last meeting, we talked about the possibility of creating a long weekend in March for our, our staff and students to kind of take a breath and, and have some time off to kind of recoup. Um, put a, a survey out there. It was 51% that were interested in that break and 49% that were not interested in adding on to the school year in June. As a compromise, I'm going to add two half professional development days to our schedule for faculty and staff 
to catch up on their work and to take a breath. I'll be communicating those two days to parents um, at the end of this week so that they can make the uh, right <clears throat> arrangements for their own children um, and covering those days for when we do have those half days of school. I'd also like to update you on our out of country field trips. Mike Holt and I spoke to the chaperones of Greece and, and Costa Rica trips. Both groups still plan on attending those trips and traveling. Um, made it very clear to the chaperones that we need to have the parents have an understanding of when the last day to get their money back for those trips is and what the protocol and procedure will be if their child does contact COVID on the trip. And so that will be put in writing and parents will be signing off on that prior to when the um, when they can't get their money back for the trip and make that decision. So they're gonna have those meetings, but they do still plan on traveling. And then finally, um, I'd like to congratulate Russ Fuller, our technology education teacher at Terryville High School. Russ was named the Connecticut Tech and Engineering Association Teacher of the Month in January. So that was a great honor for him. That's all I have for this evening. Okay. Great. Good. Congratulations to uh, Mr. Fuller. All right. Any questions for Mr. Falcone? No? Okay. Moving on, unfinished business, 2022 to 2023 budget. Um, I'm going to make the motion. If we get the first and second, then we'll have discussion on that motion. Okay. So I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the budget for 2022 to 2023 in the amount of $25,420,623, an increase of $576,973, which represents an increase of 2.35% over last year's budget. Do I have that motion? So moved. By Greg Shower. So I have a second by Mr. Foote. Um, all right. Discussion on the motion. Uh, one of the things that came up uh, in the workshop was the assistant principal um, at the middle school versus the Dean of Students, uh, thoughts on that? Um, I, I do have a question. Is that calculated within this amount? Yes. So what we would do to offset the cost difference between putting in a middle school assistant principal, if that's the, what the board decided to go with, and the Dean of Students, is we would build it into our ESSER funds and our ESSER grant for the year and then budget it within our operate, operating budget the following year. So it wouldn't have an impact on the 2.35. Okay, all right. Um, we do have information that was emailed and in front of us. So let's everybody take a look at that before we make a decision. I want everybody to digest it. Any other discussion on the budget? So to clarify, um, two documents were sent separately. One was the difference between the dean and the assistant principal and their roles and responsibilities. And the other one was the um, cost difference between the two positions as requested by the board. Yeah, let's take a couple minutes and look this over, make sure everybody's on the same page and make sure that there's no questions. Would they be union members? Who would be the union member and who wouldn't be the union member? Yes. So they're both union members. Both. The dean, Administrative? The dean of students would fall under the teacher's union. Okay. And the uh, assistant principal would fall under the administrative union. Okay. And, and that's, if you look at the responsibilities, mm -hmm. it aligns to each of those unions. Okay. 
And what is the per diem rate for the dean of students? It's not dean of students wouldn't be on there. It would be like the summer days would, paid at per diem rate. It would be the the salary of that dean of students um, divided by one eighty four, which is the number of days they work, and then that would be their per diem rate. So top step, if it was a top step sixth year. Uh, teacher on, on the on the it would be about ninety two thousand dollars a year divided by one eighty four. Again, that doesn't mean that they would be a top step <coughs> um, as a sixth year. They could be a you know the tenth step or the ninth step or the eighth step, but wherever it would be, it would be divided by one eighty four. Okay. Cool. All right, so we'll go around and see if there's any questions. Mr. Showers, any questions on the budget or the assistant principal? No, I'm all set. Cool. Okay. Who's going to come up with two? Just Fusco, yeah. honey. Um, I don't have any any questions at yes. this fact, point. Um, Mr. Perge. Yeah, good. We can hear you. Okay. All right. Ms. Ms. Did you said none. No comments. No, no, no questions at this. Okay. No questions. Okay. Uh, okay. No, I'm good. Michelle. Fine. Cindy. Okay. Mr. Perizino. Yeah, the only question I I need to increase to two point three five, which we're going to have to live with, but that doesn't <laughs> cover inflation. Inflation is five point two, but I have no other questions on it. This is the I have no questions. Okay. None. Okay. Um, we will do, uh, if we're ready, we'll go to a roll call vote. Yes means you uh, are in favor of the budget as presented with the assistant principal instead of the dean of students at the middle school. No means you're against it. Uh, Mr. Showers. Yes. Ms. Fusco. Yes. Mr. Foote. Yes. Mrs. Candria Florenziani. Yes. Mr. Perugino. Yes. Mr. Sabushka. Yes. Mrs. Lucian. Yes. Mrs. Colessa. Yes. Okay. Eight votes were cast. Eight in favor. Motion carries unanimously. All right. Item number seven on the agenda public comment. If you want to get up and speak, please state in your Full name and your address, spelling your last name. Time will be limited to three minutes. And uh, any public comments? Any public comments? All right, seeing none, we will move on to item number eight on the agenda new business, out of state field trip. I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the out-of-state field trip to Six Flags in New Jersey. Trills and Thrills Music Festival for students in grades 9 through 12 <coughs> in the music department at Terrible High School on May 20th, 2022. Do I have that motion? No. By Mr. Foot, do I have a second? Second. This is Lucian. Any discussion on that motion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Here. Item number nine, board member and committee reports. Finance and operations. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Penzo, the business manager. Good evening. Uh, before I ask you if you have any questions on the information in the packet, I wanna to touch on a few things that you've received tonight and address a few questions I know are out there. So um, first I'd like to uh, talk about the food service performance. You have that report in front of you. Um, you should note a change. Um, you'll now see the most current month's performance along with the year-to-date figures. Um, and as a side note, uh, we recently had our health inspections in all four schools passed with the grades of 98% or better, so they did very well. Um, I heard some comments about the TV that sits behind you. That is actually uh, part of the food service now. Um, the director will be able to put uh, breakfast and lunch menus up on that board along with uh, nutritional values, um, in interesting information, the weather scrolls across the bottom. Uh, we are also hoping to have 
after uh, be taking photographs of the food and so forth to go along with the menu so the kids will actually be able to see what they're going to get. So we're excited about that. It was a pretty good addition, kind of brings brings our, our program up a little bit. Um, and again, they continue to work really hard. So uh, because we're doing well this year, we can invest back into the program and actually we're required to by the government to invest back into food, food services. Um, we are gonna do that. Um, the other thing that you'll have in front of you, with which, which is a larger piece of paper, is a draft capital plan. I say the word draft because we continuously are changing it as needs arise. So to me, this is a living, breathing document. Um, there's a 10-year plan on here. We started it last year. Um, one year has already gone by, and I left it that way so that you can see what things we did do last year. Um, I will include this monthly in your board packet, uh, which means that if I make no changes, you're going to see the same document for two months in a row. But as we add things or, or add information to it, you'll at least be up to date with what projects um, we feel need to be done. If you see an X in a project, that means we need estimates uh, uh, for that given project, but we've identified it as a need. Um, we've placed them in years um, in fiscal school years based on the information that Mr. Maison has. Um, for example, you'll see the $1.6 million roof replacement, I believe is in 2023-24. That information came directly from the people who gave us the estimates and said that this is when you really need to consider this being done. It can be stretched a little bit, but this would be ideal. Um, so if there's questions on there, please feel free to give me a call or ask at any point, but I wanted to give you the information as it, it comes along. I have a couple of questions on this. Sure. Was this forwarded or did the Towns Capital Improvement Committee get a copy of this? It has not. You guys are seeing it for the first time. Okay. So this is something that me and Mr. Perugino, when we go to that meeting, will bring with us. Yes. And then I think as we amend it, we will get you the uh, email of the chairman of that commission. And I will, committee, and you could forward it over. I, forward I think it, we need I to start that updates. dialogue. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. This is good. Um, you also have the draft landscaping contract. It came in today. Um, I provided you all with a copy because I know you've asked to see this in the past. Um, when you look through this, you will note that on the second to the last page, there's actually an error. I've circled it for for ease to find. Um, I know what the right answer to the error is, but I have reached out to the vendor to say, listen, there's an error here. Um, I know you didn't mean that all the field care you were going to do for the entire year for $5,000. Uh, it's a, it's the other number that's consistent. They left the zero out when they typed it out. Yeah. Um, I didn't see it in the original bid. The attorneys found it and they left it as was in the documents they provided, but I did reach out to them. We will have it corrected before final, but... I just wanted to point it out that we did, you know, we saw that. Um, and I'm going to go uh, through So it's supposed that. to be 5000 or 500 Nope, it's 50000 <laughs> Oh, but it says 50000 on there. It's a 50 Look at the previous, look, look at the first year. Missing it's only 5000 Missing the zero. Oh, oh, yeah. So um, regarding the budget reports in your package, there's been some questions about um, lines with deficits. You are going to see lines with deficits because as we're continuously cleaning up the budget <clears throat> so that it's more transparent for all of you, we're, I'm moving, I'm moving expenses into some, in some cases, individual lines. My example to that would be uh, page, thank you, Cindy, page nine. Um, with the interventionist, you'll see there's a large deficit. But there's an offset to that because I pulled them out of other salary lines in order to isolate them. I want you to be able to see exactly where the expenses are falling. Um, in other cases, you're going to see a deficit, for example, administration at Plymouth Center School. There's a deficit there because of the situation with the school right now. We have uh, an administrator on leave. We're also paying um, our interim principal at the same time and it's coming out of that line. So we're in essence paying for two administrators out of the same line. So that's why you can see that. Um, rest assured, as I wrote in my report, I am monitoring the budget literally on a daily basis to see where we are. I'm very confident that we're going to be fine. 
Um, but if you have any questions, please don't he hesitate to give me a call, ask away. I mean, that's why I'm here is to make sure that you have a full understanding of what's happening with the finances. And I want to be a hundred percent transparent with everybody. So I just, I just wanted to add two things to what Matt said. One with the capital plan, we know there are items missing. We're trying to gather the information to make sure it's as accurate as we can as we move forward. Looking at our furnaces or whatever we might have to look at from top to bottom to make sure they get on that plan. But we're still gathering that information. We thought it was important for you to see where we are in that process and to start that communication with the town. The other piece comes to the deficits. We've had so many different business managers over a short period of time that, you know, and they all come in and do things their own way. We're just trying to, to, clean things up a little bit to make it as transparent so the board can see exactly where the money is budgeted and exactly how much is being spent in certain places. And so that's why you might be seeing some of those things as, we, as we're going through the process of cleaning it up. The plane's in the air, we're working on fixing that budget while it's in the air. So that's what you're seeing right now. Have we frozen the budget this year so far, Matt? The budget is frozen right now. It is. Yes. Thank you. Um, so with that said, is, are there any questions regarding what I sent in the original packet or with anything that you received this evening? Not yet. So you're telling us that uh, the end of the year we'll be balanced. Sorry, finish we'll be, the end of it? We will be balanced. Yep. Okay. Yes, sir. So if there are any questions, I... <clears throat> Thank you for your continued support, and please don't hesitate if something comes up to just reach out. You know, that's why you brought me in here is to answer questions that you have. Okay. okay. You did a good job with capital improvements. I'll tell you, there's a lot of capital improvements that have to be done. Yeah. It's just, just totally amazing, but it has to be so done. So I, I broke it out of two parts. The upper half are, are large projects that I believe will need to will need to work with the town on. The lower half are things that I believe that we can do over time with, if we have surplus at the end of the year or things that we can identify and do that we don't have to go back for. So that that's why it's split that way. Okay. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Um, the personnel report by Mr. Falcon. Uh, yep, it's, it's in your board packet. There are two things I would like to point out to the board. Uh, first is we added a head teacher position at Columbus Center School. We have one, but that person is not in currently. So we needed to replace that person with the stipend position to have someone in charge of the building if and when Phyllis is not in the building. So we needed to replace that person with someone. So that is a stipend position. It's not a significant amount of money, but we do have someone in charge of that building when Phyllis isn't there. The other piece you'll see is we have a 0.2 tech ed teacher in the, the personnel report. This was to offer students at the high school an additional elective due to the fact that we're not replacing that family and consumer science teacher until the end of the year, as we spoke about in our last meeting. So it was kind of supplement the high school schedule. So those two things I would like to point out to you. We still have open positions. Yes. Okay. Right. Any questions on the personnel report or comments? All right. Item number 10 on the agenda, public comments. Are there any public comments? All right, seeing none, we'll move on to board liaison reports. Um, Mr. Perugino, Harry S. Fisher. No report on vacation. All right. Mr. Zabushka, Plymouth Center School. Uh, there was no PTA meetings. Month last month. Okay. Uh, this is Condrea Florenciani. <laughs> um, so we have a couple things going on. Um, we did have the roundup last month, um, the beginning of January at IGA, and that did very well. Um, thank you very much for everyone that rounded up their purchases. That 20 cents adds up to be several hundred dollars, and it really helps out. 
We have a couple of fundraisers coming up. We have a purse bingo coming up. We have a craft fair coming up. And for eighth graders, we are selling Krispy Kreme donuts again. Last year, we it was our first time doing this fundraiser. We sold over 300 dozen donuts. It's a huge fundraiser. Um, you can only go to the casinos to get these donuts. So if you want a dozen glazed donuts, it's $10. Let me know and I can help you out with that. Um, our calendar fundraiser was, again, another great fundraiser. And we had a lot of people donate in the community to that. And um, every day we do a video to thank the donors and to let you know who's winning the prize for that particular day. That's it for the middle school. And then for the booster club, the boys basketball is doing amazing. And I went to see their game yesterday. The varsity did a great job. Um, JV did a great job. The room was pretty packed. It was really nice to see. So um, the next game that I know of is Tuesday the 15th, and they're going to have special guests there. So if you want to see a cute and fun game, go to that one. Um, the Booster Club is also selling masks, magnets, and seat cushions. If you're interested in any of those, those benches could be a little bit hard, so the seat cushions come in handy. Um, for those of you um, that are seniors, it is scholarship time, so reach out to your um, – guidance counselors, and if you're an athlete and have been a Booster Club member, you can apply for the scholarship. That's all. Thank you. Ms. Clark. The next Terryville PTSA meeting is on Thursday the 17th. Um, the PTSA is hoping to host a um, benefit night at Krabby Al's in March. They will be submitting their form to administration for you to approve. Um, they are continuing their efforts with fundraising. And as I have said in the past, if you are looking for a place to donate some hard earned money to an awesome cause, our seniors would really appreciate your help to have a safe and nice time after their graduation. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Perugino, okay. On vacation. On vacation, <laughs> all right. Ms. Fosco, at advance. Um, their February 3rd audit meeting was canceled. Okay. Postponed. All right. Mr. Showers. The next meeting is tentatively scheduled for April. All right. For the district safety committee, right? They mean quarterly, is that correct? Yes. yes. <clears throat> All right. Um, item number 12 on the agenda, board comments. Let's start with uh, Mr. Showers. All set. You have your mask off already. <laughs> I'll put it back oh, on. You're I'm all set. Right? You're all set? All right. Let's, let's go. Um, no comments. Mr. Foot. I heard a complaint about uh, a person who lives on Charles Street about parking in that area. Uh, it's narrow. Uh, there are people who drive pretty fast uh, at the end of school. Uh, also blocks the driveway of that person. Okay. Uh, just so that I bring it up before the After the meeting, we'll get the information that you have. Yes. And, and we'll take a look into that. Um, oh, I just want to say that it's nice to see our students back. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, so I'll bring up the TVs. Um, you don't realize how important it is to have nutritional fact information until you have a child with insulin needs and they have to go to the nurse and calculate what they're going to eat. And if they were to come in here and just say, mm, I don't want the pizza today, I want the hamburger. It'll be nice for them just to look up at the screen. So I don't want people to think like that that might have been a small or like, wow, what do you need that for? For the few children that do need that information, it's really handy. And it is something that, you know, I'm glad that we do have that. Um, the Wizard of Oz play is also coming up in April. When the tickets go on sale, I'll bring that up again. But that's another really great opportunity in the town. Um, they offer it to every child in town. And it's a lot of fun to watch the beginning where nobody knows what they're doing to the end and they can sing these songs and perform on stage and they have an audience. So when those tickets go for sale, um, it would be really great if you guys can support all the children that do that, all the staff that put in a lot of work. So that's pretty much it. Mr. Perugino. Yes, it was a pleasure this morning to open up the Waterbury Republican on the front page and see a positive, positive picture of our students cheering on our basketball team, rather than some of the negative things that they usually put on the front page. So it was really great to see that. It only made my 
my breakfast much better. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Mr. Zabushka. I'd like to congratulate the basketball team for doing a great job this year. Yeah. And, yeah. All set. All right. All right. So I'd also like to congratulate the basketball team and the coaches and all the hard work that goes into that. And the cheerleaders, right? Uh, we don't know if they'll do as good uh, without the cheerleaders there. So I'm um, happy to see that. The other thing, too, is I want the board to think about, and not that it, it's, we're, we're, as Mr. Falcone stated, we're uncertain where that mass thing is going to end up. But I really want you to think about it over the next week or so, where you stand on that and where you think. Um, if it does wind up at local control, we're going to have to have a special board meeting, possibly, uh, to address that. So really think about that. There is a ton of misinformation out there. Um, the Department of Public Health is saying one thing, this agency is saying another. Department of they don't even know what they're doing yet. So we really need to take and be informed, make informed decisions on that and uh, try to decipher through. And quite honestly, I don't expect any accurate information until the 28th, um, to be quite honest. But think about that and mull that over. I'm going to add on to your comments, even though I already had my turn. I um, think it's important to maybe our administrators can get some um, opinions from the staff that works in the school as well. Like I'd like to hear their their point of view. And um, I know we had a survey in my town, just basic questions about how you feel about this or how you feel about that. And even if you don't get what you you know put in the survey, yeah. it, just being asked is sometimes enough. I was going to ask the Your same thing if the heard. community, even though even though we would vote on it as a board, will the community have any input on how they feel um, either way? Or is this something that will just be a, a close well, community would be a little tougher. Yeah. <laughs> so some things I've seen in the past of surveys have gone out. I know Mr. Holtz has put it out to the uh, his um, academic uh, family there. Um, and also the teachers. Usually what happens, I haven't seen a survey yet. They usually come back about 50 50. Um, because I'm but sure maybe parents that's are going to want to, you know, well, maybe that's I mean, something we could look into. Yeah, all right, Mr. Falcone, you can let us know. Mm -hmm. All right, and that's all I have. All right. So, our next board meeting, the next regular board meeting for the Plymouth Board of Education is on Wednesday, March 9th, 2022, at 7 p.m. in the cafeteria at Terrible High School. I'd like to entertain a motion to adjourn at 7.37 p.m. So moved. By Mr. Oh, well, someone woke up. By Mr. Showers. <laughs> by the second. Mr. Foote. All in favor? Aye. Uh, any, I don't think anybody is in that. Right? All right.